well, Facebook's messing with me again today, so I am going to have to hold camera because it wants to put me sideways. And so you're going to have to bear with me while I read my notes. Um, so today we had Agent Special Agent Willis back on the stand. He is the case agent in charge. He enters all of his um, many photos of videos, photos of videos that they haven't even seen yet, um, photos from 8 News Now, from Las Vegas Review Journal, from uh, Citizens Action Network, all of these different places. Um, many of the same photo in different angles, lots of photos of Eric prone on the bridge, lots of photos of Drexler prone on the bridge, Facebook posts from Todd Engel, um, Facebook videos from Todd Engel at the end. Let's see. They start to read testimony from Eric again from the last trial. Of course, they play this. This is another FBI agent that's playing this little game where they read off cross-examination of Eric Parker. Pretty much, were you riding in, in Ricky Loveland's truck? Yes. So what are they trying to set up here? Um, Eric got on the sand last time, said that he was in the truck, said what he brought, said that he was walking a lot of the time in cross-examination. So you were walking with your gun and your plates, and Eric was like, yes, sir. And that's the part that they're reading inside the courtroom. Then we have Todd Engel, right um, on... March 3rd of 2016, Todd Engel makes a video. This is after Eric Parker's already been arrested, and Todd Engel calls Eric the head of the resistance and says that the feds um, have just cut off the head of the resistance. They didn't play the whole video like they did last time. They cut it right after that, and then they went into another part where he said there's going to be gun battles today. Um, and they're using that against these guys. Then they brought in a new video that I've never seen before. This is an interview between Ammon Bundy, Lisa Bundy, and Stuart Rhodes. And um, I didn't think that there was much of this video that was very damning. It talked about they didn't know what they were going to do, that they had talked to the sheriff, and that the sheriff was the one that released the cows, and that Cliven was talking with the sheriff uh, while the people were down there. Um, so not sure where they're going with that video, but they did enter that at the end of the day. We get into cross-examination. Mind you, we have less than like an hour left of the day. Um, it was a very boring day. We've seen the government board these jurors before, or the last jurors, and the same thing today because they're seeing the exact same pictures, pictures from video they've never seen, and he's talking about all of these different ways that he's time-stamped these pictures. Tanasi gets up there, um, and he was objecting um, to asking about an officer that's on, in a picture next to Eric Parker. That same picture that's been going around the internet for his birthday. That same picture, he says, now this officer is looking at Eric Parker. And he said, was he arrested that day? And um, Myri objected to relevance. And Tanasi says, it goes to the, negate the charges the against these. The charge, they are charged with behavior that would warrant arrest, and so I'm asking if any arrests were made that day. The judge is very irritated, very um, short, and says, objection sustained, move on. So then he goes through a bunch of the different pictures, shows other people kneeling down, points out one exhibit where he says that this person is Stephen Stewart. All of these exhibits, all of these screenshots have little yellow boxes with the names pointing to people you can't see. You can't tell who's who, but they're saying, see that little ant right there? That's Eric Parker, and that's Stephen Stewart. So um, they do this. And he's able to pick one out and say, now, is this person, we know Stephen Stewart's wearing a blue shirt that day. Is this person wearing any blue? He goes back to a different exhibit picture because they're all, you know, they did eight pictures in one minute. Eight pictures to represent one minute. And how many of those were Eric prone on the bridge? Um, so he goes to a different, and points out a bunch of different people crouching down. And um, then goes back to the other picture and says, tell me again, does this person wearing blue? And um, so I thought that that was a really good cross. Um, points out a lot of different things. Points out that nowhere ever do you see Stephen Stewart with binoculars, but there is people around him with binoculars. So um, that could be it. Points out Nevada Highway Patrol on the bridge. Um, 
talks about posts that were made in the timeline on Facebook that don't make sense. Stephen Stewart posted something about cattle being free at 1, but it wasn't until 2.30 that the cattle are actually roaming. Um, a bunch of different things about that and the fact that um, he doesn't have an earpiece, he's not standing with certain people. Um, at one point there was an objection because he was asked... Um, if Stephen Stewart was at a rally at 4 o'clock that night. And there was an objection, and he says, that's fine, I can go about it a different way. This is your summary, and it's comprised of everything important in this case. And there are no pictures of Stephen Stewart or Eric Parker or Scott Drexler at that 4 o'clock meeting. So I thought that was a great thing. Perez gets up, and um, Perez does an excellent job of actually putting Ingalls' defense back up. He plays the Nevada Highway Patrol dash cam and shows Ingle and Ricky because they're, they tried to say, you know, Ricky's doing all these things. They tried to say he sat down on the Jersey barrier and put his gun across his lap. Well, he starts going through this video, and you just see the video of Ricky just standing there. You see Todd come up to the Nevada Highway Patrol, bring him down to the edge, point to the things that they're looking at. You see all of these things. They talk about range. The guy... Um, Willis went to the wash two years later after the fact and he's saying that he can timeline things based on a bush that's there in July of 2016 that who knows is there in April of 2014. So he's got all these yardages and um, you can tell that the jury's getting frustrated with the information if they see like all these videos that he's talking about timelining them to but they haven't seen any of the videos. Um, there's an objection because they say, well, this goes past the scope. Um, you can't just watch the whole video. Somebody already entered this video and you could have crossed with that person. You can't do this. And Prez says, well, he testifies that R Ricky sat on the Jersey barrier with a weapon on his lap. And then they go to the spot. The judge actually looks it up in her transcripts that she keeps. And she's like, okay, I can see it here. So he's allowed to continue on. He goes to that timeline. You see Ricky standing for minutes and minutes and minutes not doing anything. His gun never leaves his sling. He sits down on the Jersey barrier. His gun still doesn't leave his sling. So, so far, they have found two holes in this agent's timeline. Now, we haven't gotten to uh, Marchese or Leventhal yet. But the end, Perez says, so you cannot say with a certainty of a certainty that Mr. Loveland could see the trucks from his direction. They also brought up the fact that uh, Todd Engel and Ricky Loveland were way further down the freeway. They brought up um, this agent took pictures at the bridge site where he brings a broom with him and sticks a broom all the way through the Jersey barrier and says, this is where he was, This and this is how you can point. Well, a broom that's much longer can go all the way through the slot and be manipulated more. A weapon that's stuck just the barrel into it is not able to move around. So um, that's another big thing that I think that they're, they're blowing out of the water here, but once again, we only get to this point by the end of the day. Now, um, it's said to say that the prosecution should end after this, but um, I'm not sure if they're trying to pull one over or they are, are actually going to end after this. I would expect that tomorrow we go in right into cross-examination. The, there's going to be a lot of juror questions. You can see them writing questions as everything's going along. So we'll go back in and see this. Now, there's rumors that the defense witnesses will have to proffer or some of the defense witnesses will have to proffer before they're allowed in the courtroom. Once again, this is another way for them to control us, to control our narrative. They're trying to do that every way with these objections in the courtroom. Um, the jury does see that the defense is granted nothing. The, the prosecution is granted everything. I would say Perez being able to continue after the judge looks through the transcripts was probably the only time today that the defense got, or this week even, that the defense got anything. So proffer means that they're going to have to testify in front of the judge and the prosecution before they're allowed to testify in front of the jury to make sure that their questions and answers are appropriate. Um, I'm not sure how this will work because the jury can ask their own questions, so hopefully we still have 
we're still able to get more truth out. As far as evidence getting in, it doesn't look like we'll get be able to get much evidence in. Hopefully we'll be able to bring a lot of these pictures up and um, zoom in on them and, and show what was going on. I think uh, Perez and Tanasi did a good job of pointing out that there were a lot of other people crouching down and getting out of the way. And at one point the bridge was completely clear or everyone was crouching down. Trying to kind of point out that, that there was something going on that um, there's something that they're not being told and um, we'll have to see where that goes. Another thing that was um, put in there today is Willis kept saying, and this is when the people in the wash pushed forward. This is when the people pushed forward. And um, there was an objection to that and that was another thing the defense got. Well, she said, well, there was an objection to what we were saying advancing earlier. And he said, well, you should just say move forward and move back because we all know the people in the wash move forward and move back. Um, a few times based on what people were telling them. They moved forward when people were on the other side of the um, gate talking to the protesters. So they're trying to do um, their narrative. They're trying to push that these guys are horrible individuals. They're doing uh, character assassination. Nothing has to do with facts in this case. And um, they're trying to just railroad these guys and keep them quiet. Why do they keep reading Eric Parker's previous testimony? And mind you, it's not his actual direct testimony. It's only the cross-examination questions. Why do they keep reading that in front of the jury? Why should that be allowed if he's in the room and going to testify? I'm really confused by all of this. I'm sorry um, both me and John are kind of up late last night with everything going on. So... Um, we're just getting to updates now. It's so hot down at the courthouse. It's really, really hard to do our updates standing in the blazing sun right when we get out of court. So we're working on a better way to do this. Hopefully this video came through better than some of my last ones. Um, we need more people. I think there was maybe eight to ten people in the courtroom. Um, hopefully, if all goes well, the prosecution will rest tomorrow. And we will get to start bringing our own um, witnesses in. Hopefully we are allowed more witnesses this time than we were last time. But it looks like they're starting already the same witness intimidation tactics that they used last time. So um, let's pray these people are strong and that they have convictions and they come in and, and are able to get some truth out there and that the jury asks intelligent questions to them. Um, I guess until tomorrow.